Hello everybody, this is Talon, and welcome to this nutrition tier list. A series where I break down the options in any given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how good they are for your health. Today we're going over vegetables. Now, vegetables are the stereotypical I eat these to be healthy food group, so let's see how that holds up. But before I go on, I just want to clarify something. Not everything on this list is going to fit the botanical definition of a vegetable. Quite a few of the items on this list are technically fruits, the flowering part of the plant that contains the seeds. But if you go take a look at the fruit video, it's already really long. So I'm going to be taking the most vegetable-y fruits, the ones that are culinarily considered vegetables, and ranking them here. Now, vegetables as a whole seem to fit a little bit of a pattern. They're typically mainly made up of just water, they typically don't contribute much calorically, and they typically provide a wide array of vitamins, minerals, and plant compounds that are tougher to find in other food groups. Speaking of vitamins and minerals, if you're unfamiliar with any of the ones I go over today, I have a video going over all of them that I'll link right here. Anyway, vegetables stay pretty strict to this criteria, so ranking them can be kind of a challenge. Looking at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutritional content and benefits of each vegetable against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may have. As for how to interpret this chart, the B tier would be what I would consider to be your average healthy, and generally safe vegetables. The top tier will be reserved for basically superfoods, vegetables that are the very best at what they have to offer. But rest assured that anything that I rank above the F tier is still worth including in your meal plan. It just may be comparatively nutritionally lacking or have side effects that you might want to keep an eye on. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independently of each other, so a C-tier vegetable probably won't equate to a C-tier meat or a C-tier fruit. All numerical nutritional information in this video and across this series will be based based on 100 grams of the individual food for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. In this video, I'll be marking whether the numbers are based on the vegetable being raw or cooked depending on how it's more commonly eaten. But I will mention any notable differences between the two if they can be consumed either way. Before we start, go ahead and leave down in the comments what's your go-to vegetable and where do you think it's going to land. And one last thing, if you enjoy these tier lists, or at the very least find them helpful, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more on the way. And with all that being said, I hope you're ready to just veg out and absorb because it's time to get into the vegetables. First up on our list is artichoke. Artichoke is an average calorie vegetable with an average micronutrient profile. They are easily the best source of fiber on this list, which is shown to help keep your digestive system working properly. This includes inulin, a type of soluble fiber that acts as a prebiotic. Artichoke are also shown to increase the production of bile, which removes toxic waste and breaks down fats during digestion. They're also among the best sources of antioxidants, including vitamin C, flavonoids, and phenolic compounds, which fight against the effects of free radicals and certain cancers. Artichoke is shown to raise HDL levels, regulate blood pressure, and ease symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. But artichoke has been shown to lead to gas, upset stomach, and diarrhea in some people. Artichoke can be eaten raw or cooked, with the main difference being that a notable amount of the nutrients, specifically vitamin C, are heat sensitive, making them less absorbable to the body. Overall, artichoke is a good vegetable with some impressive health benefits. I'll be placing it in the B tier. Arugula is a lower calorie vegetable with an above average micronutrient concentration. It's a great source of vitamin K, which is used for blood clotting and bone building, and a good source of beta carotene, lutein, zeaxanthin, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. Arugula also contains glucosinolates, bitter substances that are shown to combat inflammation and have antimicrobial properties. Arugula is probably not one of the vegetables you're going to be building your meal plan around, but it will definitely treat you well. I'll be placing it in the A tier. Asparagus is a low-calorie vegetable with a pretty impressive micronutrient profile. It's notably the best source of folate on this list, which helps form red blood cells, DNA, and RNA. Asparagus is a solid source of antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, and flavonoids, especially quercetin and camphorol, which are shown to lower blood pressure and have anti-inflammatory and antiviral properties. Asparagus also contains protodiacin, which is shown to restore vitality, libido, and reduce the negative effects of stress. It's also shown to support ovarian health. Asparagus are also a natural diuretic, meaning they can help flush excess fluid and salt from the body. Asparagus can be eaten raw, but cooking it makes it easier to digest. Overall, asparagus is a very healthy vegetable with several unique benefits that can go a long way for certain individuals. I'll be placing them in the A tier. Beetroot is a lower calorie vegetable with a less than average micronutrient concentration. Beets are notably the highest in sugars on this list, about 8 grams per 100 grams, but it's not like this is the same as getting 8 grams of sugar from a cookie. Beets are high in nitrates, which have been shown to improve cardiovascular and cognitive function, 
Similarly, consumption of beets have been linked with increased VO2 output and is shown to aid in post-workout recovery. Beets also contain betaine, a substance involved in liver function and cellular reproduction. They're also shown to support brain and digestive health. Beets do have a couple potential issues, though. They're higher in oxalates, an antioxidant that interferes with calcium absorption, and they also contain fructins, which may give people with IBS issues. However, cooking beets has been shown to somewhat help with this at the cost of minimal nutritional loss. Beetroot is a great vegetable where the poor macro and micro profile is more than made up for by its other unique compounds. They're going to go in the A tier. Red bell pepper is a lower calorie food with a few standout micronutrients. They have a very high concentration of vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant that protects against the effects of free radicals. But it's not the only one at work. Bell peppers also contain beta carotene, which the body converts into vitamin A, which is mainly used in the health and preservation of your eyes. Bell peppers also contain capsanthin and quercetta. They're also a natural diuretic. Now, bell peppers are considered a nightshade, with some research showing that it may be best for people with certain certain inflammatory and autoimmune diseases to limit their consumption. Bell peppers can be eaten raw or cooked, but are more nutritious raw due to many of its nutrients being heat sensitive. Overall, bell peppers are just an antioxidant bomb, and they've earned themselves an A-tier placement. Bok choy is an extremely low-calorie vegetable with a slightly above-average micronutrient profile. It's a good source of vitamin C, vitamin K, and beta-carotene, which gets converted into vitamin A. Like most cruciferous vegetables, bok choy is a good source of sulforaphane, which activates antioxidants and anti-inflammatory effects. Bok choy is shown to promote heart health and have anti-cancer properties. Now, raw bok choy has been shown to potentially hinder thyroid function, particularly in those with pre-existing issues. However, raw bok choy is a bit more nutritionally dense. Bok choy is a fine vegetable delivering exactly what you'd expect from a leafy green. I'll be placing it in the B tier. Broccoli is a lower calorie vegetable with an above average micronutrient profile. It's a great source of vitamin K and vitamin C, and a good source of lutein and zeaxanthin antioxidants that preserve eye health. It also contains the antioxidants quercetin, which is mainly known for managing blood pressure levels, and cameferol, which protects against inflammation and chronic diseases. Broccoli also provides glucosinolates, namely sulforaphane, as well as indole-3-carbonyl, a nutrient unique to cruciferous vegetables shown to stimulate detoxifying enzymes in the gut and liver. Broccoli is also one of the best sources of choline, which plays an important role in brain and memory development. Now, broccoli has been shown to potentially cause thyroid issues especially in those with pre-existing conditions. However, cooking has been shown to reduce these effects. Cooked broccoli does contain per gram more vitamin K and carotenoids at the cost of some vitamin C. Overall, broccoli is an incredibly nutritious vegetable and will be taking the first spot in our top tier. Brussels sprouts are disgusting and they'll be going straight to the F tier. Fortunately for them, this list is based on nutritional value and not taste. Brussels sprouts are actually a lower calorie vegetable with an impressive micro profile. Brussels sprouts uniquely contain a solid amount of omega-3 fatty acids, albeit in the form of ALAs, which are less useful than the kind you find in animal sources. They also contain many of the other plant compounds you'd expect to find in cruciferous vegetables, including quercetin, cameferol, sulforaphane, indole-3-carbonyl, and choline. And like most cruciferous vegetables, they have potential to cause issues for people with pre-existing thyroid conditions. Raw Brussels sprouts are generally more nutrient-dense, but not by that much. As much as it pains me to say it, Brussels sprouts are actually really good, and I'll be placing them in the A tier with an argument for a top-tier placement. Green cabbage is a lower calorie vegetable with a solid micronutrient content. It's a good source of vitamin K and vitamin C, and shares many of the same compounds as most cruciferous vegetables, quercetin, cameferol, glucosinolates, and I3C. Cabbage is also shown to improve heart health and digestive health. As usual for cruciferous vegetables, there is always potential to make thyroid issues worse, and cabbage has a bit of a trade-off nutritionally when comparing it raw versus cooked. Overall, cabbage is a fine vegetable that will generally do the body good. I'm going to place it in the B tier. Carrots are a lower calorie vegetable with a lopsided micronutrient profile. They are easily the best source of carotenoids on this list. I mean, where do you think the word carotenoid comes from? Anyway, it contains the most alpha carotene and beta carotene together, which the body converts into vitamin A, which prevents the oxidation caused by free radicals and contributes to the preservation of your eyes. Carrots are also shown to reduce the risk of several types of cancer and manage blood pressure levels. They may cause pollen-related allergies, but other than that, carrots are generally very safe. Carrots are shown to be generally more nutritious and easier to digest when cooked, but they are just fine raw as well. In the end, carrots are the very best at what they do, and I feel they've earned a spot in the top tier. 
Cauliflower is a lower calorie vegetable with an average micronutrient content. It's the best source of choline on this list, which is mainly used in brain and memory development. Cauliflower is a good source of antioxidants, including vitamin C and sulforaphane, and contains I3C like the other cruciferous vegetables. Also like other cruciferous vegetables, it may give problems to people with pre-existing thyroid issues. Raw and cooked cauliflower have a few trade-offs that are pretty balanced, and cauliflower is a solid vegetable not likely to do you wrong. It's going to go in the B tier. Celery is one of the lowest calorie vegetables on this list with a subpar micronutrient profile. It's a good source of antioxidants, including vitamin C, beta carotene, and some flavonoids. Celery is shown to reduce inflammation and promote digestive health. And celery does have a diuretic effect, ridding the body of excess fluids and such. From a nutritional perspective, celery is somewhat lackluster. It's kind of designed to be a weight loss snack and excels at being such. But it's going to go in the C tier on our list. Mature red chili peppers are a lower calorie food with a more impressive micronutrient profile. It's one of the best sources of vitamin C on this list, a powerful antioxidant that combats the damage caused by free radicals, and vitamin B6, which is important for keeping healthy nervous and immune systems. Mature chili peppers are among the best foods in regards to antioxidants. Alongside vitamin C, the most prominent is capsaicin, a strong anti-inflammatory shown to promote heart health that also gives chili peppers their signature spicy flavor. They also contain lutein, synapic acid, and ferulic acid, all of which have their own antioxidant benefits. Chili peppers are also shown to boost metabolism. Now, chili peppers are a nightshade, which people with certain conditions should limit their intake of. And chili peppers are more nutritious raw, as this helps preserve a lot of its nutrient content, especially vitamin C. If bell peppers were an antioxidant bomb, then chili peppers are an antioxidant nuke. They've 100% earned themselves a spot in the top tier. Collard greens are a lower calorie vegetable with one of the most impressive micronutrient profiles on this list. They're among the best sources on this list of vitamin K, which is needed for blood clotting and bone building, manganese, which helps the formation of bones, connective tissue, and certain hormones, calcium, which maintains healthy bones and teeth, and beta carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Collards also contain the beneficial compounds that most cruciferous vegetables contain, notably sulforaphane and I3C. And as usual for cruciferous vegetables, be aware of any thyroid problems they could inflame. As for cooking collards, there does seem to be a bit of a trade-off as raw collards have more vitamin C, while cooked collards offer more in the form of carotenoids. Collard greens are one of the most nutritious options and will land comfortably in the top tier. Whole sweet corn, the kind you eat straight off the cob, is going to be considered a vegetable for the purpose of this series. I will, however, go over the more mature grain-like variant in a later video. Anyway, corn is a higher calorie food, higher in carbohydrates mainly consisting of starch with a less than stellar micronutrient profile. It is notably one of the best sources on this list of vitamin B1, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients. They're also a good source of antioxidants, including vitamin C, ferulic acid, and lutein and zeaxanthin. Unfortunately, corn does have its issues, mainly a non-negligible concentration of phytic acid and lectin. Anti-nutrients that are shown to impair nutrient absorption. It's also a very commonly genetically modified food. Corn is more nutrient-dense raw, but cooking it will reduce anti-nutrient content. Corn is subpar nutritionally as a vegetable. It's going to be going in the C tier. Cucumbers are a very low-calorie food with a lower micronutrient content. Now, most of the items on this list are mainly comprised of water, but cucumbers take that to the extreme. Thus, they're often used to fend off dehydration. Cucumbers are shown to combat diseases like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, and they have a strong anti-inflammatory effect. They support regular bowel movements and are naturally diuretic, so they can be used to flush out excess fluids in the body. Cucumbers are not very nutritious compared to most vegetables, there's no way to really deny that, but they do definitely have their place, and despite me putting them in the seed tier, as long as you understand their purpose, they can still be a regular part of your meal plan. Eggplant is a lower calorie food with the lowest overall micronutrient concentration per gram on this list. Eggplants are very rich in anthocyanins, particularly nosunin, an antioxidant known for protecting brain cell membranes. They're also shown to regulate blood sugar levels and be beneficial for heart health. Eggplants do have a few notable potential downsides. They are nightshades, meaning people with certain inflammatory or autoimmune diseases should be wary. They also contain a few anti-nutrients, tannins, oxalates, phytic acid, typically not enough on their own to cause any serious problems, but still something to be aware of. Cooking eggplant does reduce anti-nutrient concentration. Overall, eggplant is far from the worst thing you could eat, but compared to pretty much everything else on this list, it's quite unimpressive nutritionally. I'm going to put it in the D tier. 
Endive is a very low-calorie vegetable with one of the more impressive micronutrient profiles. They're a great source of vitamin K, which is used in blood clotting and bone building, and among the best sources of folate, which helps form DNA and RNA and is used in protein metabolism. Endive also has its fair share of antioxidants, beta-carotene, quercetin, myrosetin, and camphorol all of which have anti-inflammatory or cellular protective effects. Endive is a great vegetable, providing many of the benefits cruciferous vegetables provide without being one itself. I'm going to place it in the B tier. Garlic is, gram for gram, the highest calorie food on this list with a unique nutritional profile. It's the best source of several micronutrients on this list. Manganese, which mainly contributes to the formation of bones, connective tissue, and certain hormones. Vitamin B6, which maintains the nervous and immune systems. Selenium, which acts like an antioxidant. Calcium, which is mainly used for strong bones and teeth. And among the best in copper, which aids in iron absorption. Garlic contains sulfur compounds that have various health benefits. The first one that typically comes to mind is allicin, which is shown to prevent certain cancers and manage blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure levels. But garlic also contains diallyl disulfide and acyl cysteine, which have antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and cardiovascular protective activities. Garlic is also shown to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. Now, consuming too much garlic can lead to some gastrointestinal issues, but realistically, you're not going to be eating that much of it anyways. If ever there was a food that was designed to be consumed in smaller amounts, this would be it. Garlic is going to be resting safely in the top tier. Green beans, also called string beans, are a lower calorie food with a less than average micronutrient content. They're a decent source of vitamin K and contain a variety of antioxidants including beta carotene and lutein, vitamin C, and a variety of flavonoids like quercetin and camphorol. Green beans are also shown to improve digestive health, bone health, and heart health. Green beans do contain anti-nutrients in the form of phytic acid and lectins that are reduced during the cooking process. In the world of beans, green beans are fine. However, because they're often treated like a vegetable side dish culinarily, I feel it's best to compare accordingly. And in the world of vegetables, they're a bit subpar nutritionally. Still very healthy when prepared properly, but green beans will be going in the sea. Tier. Jalapenos are a lower calorie food with an average micronutrient profile. They're among the best sources of vitamin B6, which is used for the upkeep of your immune and nervous systems. Like most peppers, jalapenos have a very impressive antioxidant content, including vitamin C, capsaicin, and lutein and zeaxanthin. Jalapenos are shown to boost metabolism and combat the effects of cancer. Now, jalapenos may cause GI issues in excess, and like all peppers, jalapenos are nightshades, which people with certain conditions should avoid. Jalapenos would make for a great, nutritious way to spice up a lot of your meals. They're going to be going in the A tier. Kale is a lower calorie vegetable with easily the highest micronutrient content on this list. It's the best source of vitamin K on this list by far, which is mainly used for blood clotting and bone building. It's also one of the best sources of carotenoids, namely beta-carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin, antioxidants that are shown to mainly preserve eye health. Kale also has a significant amount of other antioxidants like vitamin C, quercetin, and camphorol, which combat free radicals, inflammation, and certain cancers. Like other cruciferous vegetables, kale also contains sulforaphane and indole-3-carbonyl. And kale is even more nutrient-dense raw, especially when it comes to vitamin C and carotenoid concentrations. Now, kale may cause issues for people with pre-existing thyroid conditions, especially when eaten raw. And I feel it bears mentioning, due to the insane vitamin K concentration, that people who take blood thinners should be wary. When it comes to raw nutritional value, nothing even comes remotely close to kale. It's going to be going in the top tier. Leeks are a lower calorie vegetable with a mediocre micronutrient profile. They're a solid source of antioxidants like camphorol, which is mainly known for protecting against chronic diseases like heart disease and certain cancers. Lutein and zeaxanthin, which are mainly known for eye health and preservation, and allicin, an antimicrobial shown to manage cholesterol. Leeks are also shown to promote brain and digestive function. Leeks do contain a notable amount of oxalates, which may lead to kidney stones in excess in some people. Oxalate concentration is reduced by cooking, but so is its micronutrient content by a pretty significant amount. Overall, leeks are just fine, but offer a little less than what I would expect in a typical vegetable. Thus, they're going to go in the C tier. Iceberg lettuce is a very low-calorie vegetable with a almost non-existent micronutrient profile. It is 96% water, which there are some other vegetables that are nearing that number, but 
Still, iceberg lettuce does contain non-negligible amounts of vitamin K and carotenoids like beta-carotene and lutein and zeaxanthin, but basically iceberg lettuce is a blank slate to add some filler or a little crunch to your meal. And that's not a bad thing. It has its place in the kitchen, but nutritionally, it's going to be going in the D tier. Okay, now this is how you do lettuce. Romaine lettuce is another incredibly low-calorie vegetable, except this one has one of the most impressive micronutrient profiles on this list. It's a great source of carotenoids, beta-carotene, and lutein mainly, which are shown to preserve eye health. Also in the antioxidant department is vitamin C and various flavonoids and tocopherols, which combat the effects of free radicals. Romaine is also one of the best on this list of folate, which helps form DNA and RNA. One of the best leafy green vegetables, romaine lettuce is going in the A tier. Mustard greens are another lower calorie leafy vegetable with an even higher micro content. Mustard greens are an amazing source of vitamin K needed for blood clotting and bone building, and carotenoids like beta-carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin. They're also a solid source of vitamin C. And like other cruciferous vegetables, they contain sulforaphane and I3C. Similar to other cruciferous vegetables, mustard greens may cause issues for people with pre-existing thyroid conditions, and mustard greens may have the biggest nutrient drop-off when cooked on this list. But they're still a fantastically nutritious option and will be joining the top tier. Okra is a lower calorie food with an average micronutrient content. It has a good amount of vitamin K and vitamin C, and rather uniquely contains mucilage, a thick gel-like substance that binds to cholesterol and causes it to be excreted rather than absorbed, effectively lowering cholesterol levels. Unfortunately, okra does contain solanine, a toxic compound that in excess can lead to joint pain. It also contains varying amounts of the anti-nutrients oxalates and lectins. Cooking okra does minimize these, but it also reduces its nutrient content. Okra is far from the worst thing that you could eat, but in the world of vegetables, they just don't measure up. I'm going to put them in the D tier. Yellow onions are a mid-calorie vegetable with one of the worst micronutrient profiles on this list. That being said, they have several unique plant compounds with unique health benefits. First off, they contain a solid amount of antioxidants, mainly quercetin, a flavonoid with a strong anti-inflammatory effect that's also shown to control blood sugar. They're also one of the best sources of allicin, which has strong antimicrobial properties, and uniquely contain onionin A, a sulfur compound shown to combat cancer and regulate white blood cell activity. Onions are also shown to fortify bones and be a natural diuretic, flushing out excess fluid. Onions may aggravate irritable bowel syndrome and are typically better raw to get the most out of their sulfur compounds. For many foods, you have to look past macros and micros to see their true value, and onions are like the poster child of that concept. They're going to be going in the A tier. Parsnip is a higher calorie vegetable with a less than average micronutrient content. They're a decent source of vitamin C and other antioxidants like quercetin, camphorol, and apigenin, which enhance immunity and protect against infections. Parsnips are one of the better sources of fiber on this list, which helps move food through your GI tract. They're also shown to overall support heart health. Parsnips are more nutritious raw, especially in regards to vitamin K and manganese. A solid vegetable, but nothing spectacular, parsnips are going in the B tier. Peas are one of the higher calorie foods on this list, with a solid micronutrient profile. They're one of the better plant protein sources, containing over 5 grams per 100 grams, and also one of the highest in sugar, at about 6 grams per 100 grams. They're the best source of vitamin B1 on this list, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients. Peas are also one of the best sources of fiber on this list, which aids the digestive process. Peas do contain a fair amount of antioxidants, including vitamin C, lutein, zeaxanthin, and various polyphenols. Being a legume, peas do contain a fair amount of anti-nutrients in the form of lectins, phytic acid, and tannins, but these can be reduced by cooking. In the world of vegetables, which peas are often considered culinarily, they're pretty solid and unique. I'll be placing them in the B tier. Dill pickles, which in my opinion are different enough from plain cucumbers to rank separately, are a low-calorie food with a subpar micro profile outside of a couple outliers. They're a decent source of vitamin K, but the main difference is the sodium that pickles get from the brining process. Pickles are shown to aid with rehydration by restoring electrolyte balance. Pickles are also shown to combat insulin resistance and inflammation, and contains acetic acid which is shown to help with muscle cramps and probiotics which promote gut health. Overall, pickles are not what I would consider to be nutritious, but they provide some health benefits that are entirely unique. Despite this, they're still going in the C tier. Potatoes are a higher calorie vegetable with a lower than average micronutrient profile. The main selling point for potatoes is that they're a very good starchy carbohydrate. 
and contains something called resistant starch, which is good for gut bacteria and regulating blood sugar. Potatoes contain a few noteworthy antioxidants, vitamin C, catechin, and chlorogenic acid, which also regulates blood sugar. Because of all this, potatoes are really good for boosting insulin sensitivity. They're also shown to improve digestive health and aid in muscle and nerve system function. Potatoes are a nightshade, which research has shown people with certain inflammatory or autoimmune diseases should generally avoid, and potatoes are often prepared in not so healthy ways. But potatoes themselves, in a more natural state, are pretty innocent and pretty unique in the vegetable world. I'll be placing them in the B tier. Radishes are a really low-calorie vegetable with a less impressive micro-content. They're a solid source of antioxidants, including vitamin C and phenolic compounds like catechin. Radishes are a natural antifungal and are shown to support healthy digestion, help the liver in the detoxification process, and help the kidneys flush out toxins. Another example of how looking past what you find in the food label changes everything, radishes are another solid vegetable deserving of the B-tier status. Spinach is a lower-calorie vegetable with one of the highest micronutrient concentrations on this list. They're the best source of several micronutrients on this list, including folate, which is used in the production of DNA and RNA, magnesium, which regulates muscle and nerve function and aids in protein, bone, and DNA synthesis, iron, which is used for hemoglobin and myoglobin creation, which are needed for transferring oxygen throughout the body, and vitamin B2, which is used to convert carbohydrates into fuel. Spinach is also one of the best sources of vitamin K, manganese, and calcium. Spinach also contains antioxidants including beta-carotene, lutein and zeaxanthin, vitamin C, quercetin, and camphorol. Lastly, spinach is shown to regulate blood pressure levels. Unfortunately, spinach does come with the notable drawback of being very high in oxalates. Oxalates are an anti-nutrient that binds to calcium and in excess could lead to kidney stones. Spinach is definitely better cooked, as this not only reduces the oxalate content by a significant margin, but also allows for better absorption of calcium and iron. But when it is cooked, it does lose out on some of its antioxidant concentration. Also, the iron in spinach isn't the most absorbable thing in the world, especially when compared to animal products. However, pairing it with foods high in vitamin C, copper, and citric acid have been shown to help with this. From a nutrient perspective, there's no two ways about it. Spinach is a top-tier vegetable. Sweet potatoes are a higher calorie vegetable with a solid micronutrient profile. The main draw being they're a healthier, starchy carbohydrate source. But sweet potatoes are, gram for gram, the best source of beta-carotene on this list, having an even higher concentration than carrots themselves. Beta-carotene is converted into vitamin A, which is mainly known for its eye protective benefits, but it's also used to maintain a strong immune system and healthy skin. And it's not the only antioxidant at work. Sweet potatoes also contain vitamin C and a range of chlorogenic acids, which are shown to regulate blood sugar levels. Sweet potatoes also contain a notable amount of resistant starch, which is beneficial for gut bacteria. Sweet potatoes do have a higher concentration of oxalates, but cooking them, specifically boiling them, greatly reduces this. Overall, sweet potatoes are one of the healthiest starches and vegetables and will rest safely in the top tier. Turnips are a lower calorie vegetable with a lower than average micronutrient concentration. They contain several antioxidants including vitamin C, glucosinolates, and anthocyanins. Turnips are shown to have anti-cancer and antibacterial properties and are shown to regulate blood sugar. Now turnips are believed to interfere with the thyroid gland, particularly in those with pre-existing conditions, though there is conflicting evidence on this. Overall, turnips are a perfectly healthy vegetable, and if you like them, there's no reason not to eat them. But in the world of vegetables, there's nothing about them that really stands out, and I'll be placing them in the D tier. Water chestnut is one of the highest calorie foods on this list, with a unique set of micronutrients. They're the best source on this list of copper, which helps make red blood cells, keeps a healthy immune system, and aids in iron absorption. And potassium, whose main role is to maintain normal cellular fluid levels, as well as being one of the best sources of vitamin B2. Water chestnut contains antioxidants, catechin, and ferulic acid, which has very strong anti-cancer properties, and are shown to regulate blood pressure. Water chestnut is a unique food with a unique flavor and a unique set of nutrients. I'll be placing it in the B tier. Last on our list is watercress, a very low-calorie vegetable with an impressive micronutrient profile. Watercress is a great source of vitamin K, which is used for blood clotting and bone building. It also has one of the highest concentrations of antioxidants on this list, beta-carotene, lutein and zeaxanthin, vitamin C, and a variety of flavonoids. 
Watercress also contains sulforaphane and isothiocyanates, which have a strong anti-cancer effect. Similar to other cruciferous vegetables, watercress may cause issues for people with pre-existing thyroid conditions, but for everyone else, watercress is a phenomenal vegetable to spice up your salad and other dishes with, and we'll be rounding out this list in the A tier. So as it turns out, we didn't even need that bottom tier. More or less, vegetables are exactly what you'd expect. And just because I ranked some higher than others doesn't mean that everything on this list is not serviceable and healthy, as pretty much anything on this list, when prepared properly, will be better for you than whatever man-made abomination you'd be tempted to stuff down your face. The thing about vegetables is that they are a piece to a puzzle, the puzzle that is your diet that you can build any number of ways because there is no perfect picture for everyone. Vegetables do not stand on their own, because they mainly don't contribute in ways that involve calories. They will, however, almost always be a positive addition that will benefit those that go the extra step in including them. Hopefully this list introduced you to a few new options you can mix into your meal plan. And if you think I missed something that should have been on this list, first off, go check out the fruit list because it might be on there. But if not, go ahead and leave a response to the pinned comment down below with any vegetables you'd like to see in a part two. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty of content like this on the way. Speaking of which, go ahead and leave down in the comments which food group you'd like to see me cover next. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your own body. After all, you only get the one.